Hello, today we're going to be talking about earthquakes. Earthquakes? What are they? Well, an earthquake is the release of pressure that has been built up over time in the ground beneath us. That doesn't sound like much fun. No, it's not. Towns and cities are often destroyed and people can lose their homes or their businesses. Oh no, where do they happen? Well, beneath the ground there are these huge plates called tectonic plates which make up the Earth's crust. Between each plate there are plate boundaries. There are four different types of plate boundary. Destructive, collision, constructive and conservative. What's the difference between all of those? Well, there are two types of plate, oceanic and continental. The oceanic is dense and heavy, and the continental is lighter and less dense. At a destructive boundary, continental and oceanic plates collide. The oceanic is forced under the continental and is destroyed. This causes the pressure to release and causes an earthquake and can also create a volcano. At a collision margin, two continental plates collide and force each other upwards. Again, this causes an earthquake. The others are different. They can happen with any sort of plate. At a constructive, the plates move apart. This more commonly causes volcanoes as magma rises to the surface, but earthquakes also occur. And at conservative boundaries, two plates rub against each other, either in opposite directions or in the same direction, at different speeds. Only earthquakes are found at conservative margins. Wow, that's an awful lot of ways that they can happen. Indeed it is, but you need to know it all for your exams. What else do we need to know? Another very important thing to know is specific case studies for both LEDCs and MEDCs. Well, I already know that an example of an MEDC is the earthquake in Japan, and an LEDC example is Haiti. Yes, well done. Japan and Haiti both lie on destructive margins. Mmm, that's interesting. So I heard two terms the other day, focus point and epicentre. They both seem the same, so what's the difference? Well, I'm glad you asked. The focus point is where the pressure is released inside the Earth, and the epicentre is the point directly above it on the surface, where the centre of the earthquake is. OK, thanks. So there's anything else I should know? Well, you need to know some prediction methods, effects and management methods of earthquakes. So before an earthquake strikes, people try and predict them. MEDCs may have more luck with this as they have better equipment like seismographs. What are those? They sound expensive. They are. And that's why only MEDCs can really afford them, which is a shame as they are the most accurate way of prediction. What they do is measure movement in the Earth. So if there is a lot of movement, then an earthquake is probably imminent. People can observe animal behaviour, as these animals have a sixth sense about when earthquakes are going to come. Another way is by looking at patterns in past earthquakes. If an earthquake tends to happen every 100 years, and it's been about 99 since the last earthquake, then you should prepare for another. These are just a few ways of predicting. There are many more. Well, what about effects? These can be sorted into primary, where it's a direct result of the ground shaking, or secondary effects, which are a result of primary effects. Some primary effects are buildings falling down, transport and communication links being destroyed, and landscape being destroyed. And then secondary effects include homelessness, bankruptcy, looting, disease, fall of tourism, and many, many more. All of those sound horrible. They are, and LEDCs suffer a lot more than MEDCs. So now, management methods. There are things that MEDCs can do that LEDCs can't, that are very effective, such as preparing buildings. They can wrap the building in a metal cage, give it deep rubber foundations, install computer-controlled weights on top of the building and install shatterproof windows. All these are very effective but also expensive, so LEDCs can't afford them. But what they can do is make sure that all the citizens are prepared with emergency kits and are educated in what to do. 
If areas have buildings that are made from mud and sticks, if they fall, they are less likely to cause damage to people. Well, it sounds like there's a lot that people can do. There is, but all of that is after the quake has hit. So most of the damage is already done. Now that's the end of this podcast. But remember, keep looking over your notes and going on revision sites. And good luck for your exam. We would just like to thank Leon Webster for writing this wonderful script. All the best of your exams.